there have been a million and one scientific studies conducted to see the effect of exercise on our bodies. Whether you love going for a run, playing sports with friends, or even hitting the gym at the weekends, exercise has proven time and again to have positive effects on our bodies and overall well-being. But what do these activities do to our brains? Let's take a look at cardio. Cardio covers any type of exercise that makes our heart race and really gets the blood pumping. Think of running, jogging, walking, jumping rope, swimming or high intensity interval training. The things that, if done for extended periods of time, will leave you aching, out of breath or drenched in sweat. So why do people do it? What good could that do to your brain? Well, as it turns out, quite a lot. Studies have suggested it can enhance mood, boost self-esteem and can even help with anxiety and mild depression. Not to mention it can reduce the odds of having a stroke or developing diabetes or heart disease. Cardio makes blood pump rapidly around your body, delivering more oxygen to the brain and, as a result, endorphins are released from the pituitary gland. Endorphins are the body's natural, feel-good chemicals. You might have heard of runner's high, a common euphoric feeling experienced after a long, intense run or exercise session. Well, endorphins are responsible for that great feeling and it really can have a positive impact on your body and mind. It's not only endorphins that are released after exercise though. Dopamine, norepinephrine and serotonin are also released and each one of these can have great mood altering effects on a person and even help improve their quality of sleep. As if these weren't already great enough reasons for you to immediately sign up to the local gym, there are some other surprising benefits. A study conducted by the University of British Columbia found that regular cardio exercise actually appeared to boost the size of the hippocampus, the part of the brain that deals with memory and learning. Another surprising result of exercise is that it can actually change the structure of your brain. Some studies have concluded that the memory centers have more volume in the brains of people who exercise compared to the brains of people who don't. Research conducted on sets of identical twins in Finland who were active as children but only one of each pair continued to exercise into adulthood revealed similar results. The brain of the more active twin contained more grey matter cells in region of the brain linked to coordination and body movement. Age is known to cause cognitive decline. It's common that people will begin to forget things as they get older. However, exercise can have such a benefit on the brain that it actually helps prevent this. A study conducted by the University of Iowa concluded that some people between the ages of 60 and 80 actually showed improved cognitive functions. Exercise helps the growth of blood vessels in the brain, which allows it to receive more oxygen and, as a result, can even boost the growth of neurons. This isn't to say it'll make elderly people smarter, but it can help them be more alert. So how much exercise should we be doing to start reaping these rewards? The actual recommended amount of exercise differs from person to person. However, as a good starting point, health guidelines set by the American government recommend to engage in roughly 30 minutes of moderate intensity cardio activity five days a week. Adding muscle strengthening activities such as lifting weights twice a week can also be beneficial, as can increasing the amount and intensity of exercises gradually over time. While the thought of strenuous exercise can be daunting, it turns out the benefits of doing so are well worth it to keep your body and your mind in healthy working order. How much exercise do you manage per week? Tell us in the comments below.